And, you know, as a, you know, renowned archaeologist, you've done so much work with the statues, uh, the Moai statues. Could you tell us a little bit about the mystery behind these statues and what your findings, you know, or you found? Well, we call it mystery because it's, uh, it's something uh, nicer than uh, and more mysterious, mm -hmm. so more exciting to talk about it. But from a perspective of an archaeologist, what we call a mystery, really, in popular term, are really problems, problems to be solved, things that we need to answer. So there are things uh, very basic, like how this monument, the Moai, were transported from the quarry where they are produced all the way to 15, 20 kilometers away, going uphill, downhill, on a, r a very rough uh, terrain, uh, moving a piece of status that weighed 100 ton, 50 ton, etc. And um, so how they did it? Well, this problem have uh, invited many uh, people to present hypotheses saying, on the one hand, that the status were moved, let's say, in a in a horizontal way on log rolling. Some will say just dragging. Some will say, well, move in horizontal position but tracing up and down like with the bipod method. Other group of people will say, no, this statue was moved in a vertical position, standing, just like our ancestor used to say. They, when you ask to the older people on this island how the statue were moved, they will say they were moved walking. And then you ask next, how they walk? They didn't have feet. Oh, they walk with mana. Mana is that, you know, knowledge, charisma, that special power. And so then it ended there. It became more mysterious. They walk with mana. Hmm. And many, of course, will not believe it, especially foreigners who will say that how you can move such a huge piece of art in a vertical position. There's no feet. There's no way to do it. But the ancient people on this island were much more ingenious. They know that these tattoos, they can give a shape in the base, lean it a little bit forward, and by kind of tiptoeing, like moving a refrigerator, using rope, they were able to do it little by little. But then you ask the question, why they have to do it in such a way? We could move it like that, easily, you know, and then raise it perhaps next to uh, the platform. First of all, around 14th, 15th century AD, there were not enough log on this island to have a rolling so the statue can roll on. Secondly, a statue made of volcanic tuff that you move a vertical position, if it's, you know, vibrate, it crack, it break. So it was more effective to move it in a vertical way. And then archaeologically, I had the opportunity through several years to discover evidence that support the hypothesis that the Moai were moved vertically. First of all, we discovered that the statue, once they are made at the quarry, the base was prepared in a way that facilitated this movement in vertical positions. Secondly, that once the statue have fell down, the face will be damaged badly and the broken neck will be separated from the body. So if the statue were moved horizontal like that and then break, the two pieces will be in place. It doesn't have to jump three feet away or two feet away. And there will be no damage to the face since it was very close to the ground. But what we found is a statue that fell down, break the head, damaged the nose and the forehead systematically. If the statue fell backward, the same thing. So, yes, definitely we have clear evidence to suggest that the Moai were move vertical positions. Once it's arrived to the platforms, then the damage caused around the base because of the movement, it, it need to be trimmed off of polish again, reshape. So, the clear evidence of that is the result of the excavation I have done in uh, at least uh, three sites where the stratigraphy show rest or remain of this work. Mm. And secondly, that once you're facing an ahu with the status, you will see that the statue have the shoulder a little bit wider than the base. So it's shaped like a heart. It's a heart shape. 
However, at the quarry, at the beginning of the process, before it's being transported, you see the, the body of the moai almost in a rectangular shape. So that transformation occurred because it needed to polish the damage caused during the transportation process so the moai can end up standing on the platform, not only with that reshape, but also they cut more flat base. So the moai, rather than leaning forward, a position that's convenient for a transportation, it has to lean back in a final posture, overlooking the village of those that build the status or make the status. So this is one of the so-called mystery that we have practically solved it. Not absolutely, because we need to know how they tie the rope, where they tied it, what kind of rope, how many people are involved, and etc. Wow. Very so that, that to me is one of the most important uh, contribution of the Rapa Nui culture to our humanitarian knowledge, is how you can move a piece of art, almost completely finished in a vertical position, all the way to its final destination. I don't know other cultures do that, at least with the dimension of a monument like uh, the one we have here. We know very much about many other places on the planet where a huge piece of rock, even 200 tons, that they will drag and they will pull it. And that knowledge in Egypt or elsewhere that probably led to many colleagues to think in the same way. But here, the people were much more ingenious. They were dealing with the minimal resource with the most effective way. And this is reflected in many aspects of the culture. Moving a status, you do it in such a simple looking way, more effective, and yet with few tools. There's no uh, wheels, and we don't have huge logs to do wages, but we have ropes. And we have another even more beautiful thing, it's called shunt. When the people need to pull the rope at a given moment, in order to coordinate that movement to provide a rhythm, so you anticipate at what point you pull the rope or you let it go, there would be a shunt. So that is the technology we have, is the shunt to provide the rhythm so the people can pull at the right moment and they don't tip the stud over. So it's a fantastic, in ingenious way to deal with a big problem, how to transport a finished status in a vertical position.